the King is about to re-enter the building mm -hmm. as Baz Luhrmann finally releases his long-awaited movie telling the story of Elvis. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> How amazing. Austin Butler looks amazing in it. Right, we're joined now by three of the pop icon's biggest fans. We've got Freddie, Todd and Mary. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. morning. I can feel your excitement <laughs> as we're watching that. Bumps, isn't it? It, it really does. Do you know what? It really, really does. I'm not nearly as big a fan as you are, but that still is very exciting. Your love affair with Elvis started at the age of about five, I think, yes. wasn't it, Freddie? Yeah. And it was a little toy you got given. Yes, so my nan and granddad in her house before I'd even seen Elvis, knew what he looked like or who even Elvis was, there's a hound dog, and he used to press his little button like a hound dog dressed in the jumpsuit, and it used to go, you ain't nothing but a hound dog, like that. And I was like, this voice is Amazing. brilliant. Um, used to go around the school singing it. I was like the smallest kid in school, going around <laughs> singing Elvis. It was just, yeah, that's so, oh, I mean, how it started. It's, uh, it's progressed enormously, because yeah. this month you were crowned the UK's number one Elvis fan yeah. by the Sun newspaper, awarded £10,000 trip of a lifetime to Memphis. Yes, yes. So when is that trip? So I, I haven't been given any dates yet. I'll, I'll go whenever they tell me to go, to be honest. I'm quite happy to stay in a box and just as long as to go to Memphis yeah, and, go see, and it. see it. Um, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, I'm got most looking forward to seeing his grave. Um, mm. I think that'll be very special. Quite uh, emotional for you, I imagine, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking of something really special to put on sort of Elvis's grave when, mm. when I go and see it. And is there, is it true you're going to possibly watch the movie with Vernon Kay? So, so, <laughs> so I've been told Vernon Kay would like to go and watch the movie with me. I'm just waiting for, for, for that to uh, finalise, so. Have you got um, have you got a solo gig coming up? You're about you're about to perform. Yes, I'm doing my first ever. You see, you see, I'm trying to grow the sideburns. I don't want to be. How long is it until the gig? Uh, night for night for July. So well, I've you've got, got time. Okay, got a time, time to, yeah. to grow them a bit a bit thicker. Not pencil those in. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'll probably be nervous once I'm in front of everybody and I say, oh, this is it. But this would be my first one. I've done ones where I've sung at people's half time shows or I've sung at festivals and stuff like that, but this has been my first Freddie Memphis as Elvis singing to everybody. Well, so, good luck yeah, to you. Enjoy you. it. Enjoy it going when you go to Memphis thank, as thank well. You. Then we've got Todd, and you are a very dedicated fan. I've you, been around a long time. You yeah. have been. In fact, you ran the official <laughs> Elvis Presley fan club of Great Britain for nearly six decades. Yes. And you actually met Elvis. It was the first time in 1972. 72, yeah. Wow, We'd so taken a group of fans to see Elvis at the Las Vegas Hilton. Yeah. Um, Colonel Parker, Elvis's manager, helped uh, for us to get really good seats. It was a fantastic experience. And one of the biggest experiences, of course, is not only seeing Elvis, but when you've taken 200 fans, you want to see their reaction. Mm. So my head was going backwards and forwards between Elvis and, yeah. and our and people. Fans, yeah. well, and, the, and they were in ecstasy. You're holding a trophy there. Uh, and, and this, this, is, is, it, the trophy. this is it here. Well, 45 years ago this week, we had a group of fans in the States to see what turned out to be Elvis's last two oh concerts. My God. And just before Elvis did his last show, um, I was, we went to um, Indianapolis Airport when uh, Elvis's plane arrived, and I was presented with this. By the king himself? By the king, yeah. And to be fair, this piece of film that you just had on was the last film ever shot of Elvis before he died because oh only a few God. weeks later yeah. he passed. That's extraordinary. And um, you, this, this book that Phil's got here, Colonel Parker, you were just talking about there just now, there's a lot of said about him sort of in the film and what type of man he was. But yeah. you were a very different man. You know, I knew Colonel Parker very, very well. He was uh, a, a tremendous character as far as I was concerned. He was, like every manager, out for his own. But, you know, he only ever managed one act. He wasn't like Larry Parnes or, or, or Brian Epstein. He only looked after Elvis. Mm. Um, and he, he did his best. He launched Elvis into a market that hadn't existed mm. before Elvis came yeah. around. But he also, he, he took a... For you, you were ill um, and... He took a very personal interest in yeah, me. Yeah, and he was phoning you up to make sure you're OK. Yeah, I, I had a heart transplant 28 years ago. Um, not sex, drugs and rock and roll, just bad <laughs> luck. Uh, and uh, he uh, rang my home every day for, until I was out of hospital just to check up how yeah, I was. Amazing. And we spoke to each other thereafter. I mean, I saw him in the, sta in, in the States at his home, stayed at his house many times. And all the stories that he told me about his life, and particularly how he got from um, uh, Holland via England, mm. spending six months in Bedford and then leaving Liverpool yeah. on a ship 
what which was a Royal Mail ship. What was Elvis like when he walked into a room? Do you know, I had met lots of stars beforehand, and, and I, I always say that, you know, Jimi Hendrix, who I spent a day with and didn't even know who he was, um, the, the Beatles, the Stones, Ike and Tina Turner, um, they were easy to meet. As far as Elvis was concerned, all the people that I had met before never prepared me for meeting Elvis. Right. And when Elvis came in the room, there was a dozen fans in the room, mm. it almost as if he hadn't entered because you would have expected this 20th Century Fox fanfare and flashing lights and that. There was none of that. Um, and he was very polite. Very, um, very, very, very modest. Yeah. He came alive on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah as we've all seen. Um, and then we've got Mary here. Hello, Mary. And again, you've been a lifelong fan, haven't you? I think, was it the movies, yeah. first of all, that so grabbed you? I went with my best friend, Debbie, when I was 11. We yeah. went to um, the Odeon, where we lived in the Midlands. And it was a double bill back in those days. You paid one fee and got in. And it was just when he started singing Can't Help Falling In Love With You with his... Um, and you just, did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just, just, just blew me away. You, ah. you say, and as we've heard this from many, many people. I have a, a friend of mine who is a devoted mm. Elvis fan, uh, so devoted that she was actually offered a job at Memphis, I think, oh. some time ago at the Graceland's. Um, for you, he helped you through trouble times in your life. Yes. In what yeah. way? Um, I mean, I've had lots of surgery. I had knee replacement last year. And there's just songs, because I know all his songs, mm. uh, that I can turn to. So I've got playlists made up of, like, comfort songs and love songs and what I call the, the big hits, the big songs. Um, I mean, my favourite Elvis song is uh, Tomorrow Never Comes, mm. which you don't hear very often, but yeah. if you listen to his voice when he's singing that, it's, it's just amazing. Um, and, and as a fan, I'd stayed away, like, from ETA Worlds, um, and then I, I got a very good friend, um, Gary Foley, who said to me, you know, Mary, Elvis is dead, he's not coming back. You need to embrace the world that's out there. Mm. Um, and so thanks to Gary, that's what, just what I've done. And I've been working with um, Bulldog Promotions and I've been out there um, doing festivals. I've met Emilio, I've met Ben Thompson. There you are, there we see a yeah. you now. Dean C. Yeah, I've literally just been back a week. I was this Lucky time... you! Yeah, I did Nashville, I did Tupelo and I did Memphis. And you're off to Hawaii next? Hawaii in April, yeah. Yeah, that's my... After Graceland, that was my next go-to place. Was For Hawaii. Elvis's birthday? Yeah. So explain some of the things. Uh, so, yeah. Graceland is... I will never own Graceland. That's the nearest I'm ever going to get to owning <laughs> Graceland. Um, the little jewellery, but the music box there is what my son bought me for Christmas because it plays Can't Help Falling In Love With You. So, my son's very thoughtful. For my 60th birthday, he bought me... Uh, the Builder Bear, Elvis. Yeah. Um, this pink vinyl I bought when I was 12 years old, I saved my pocket uh, money and bought God. that. Um, the Lego Elvis I made through lockdown. And then I've been a supporter of the uh, Elvis fan club for a long time, and these are just some of my magazines. Mm. Um, my house is just filled with Elvis. My lounge, my bedroom, everything. There's not a day goes by I don't listen to, to Elvis. You have just come back from Graceland. Yes. Freddie is about to go yes. to Graceland. So what would you say to him? I would say to him, take it all in and take your time. Um, I mean, for me, it was my second trip. And as you go through the house, you'll get to the end where the graves are. And I, mean, I was crying without realising I was crying. Mm, very um, emotional. Yeah. The, the, um, the movie, obviously, to anyone to step into those blue suede shoes is a big ask. From what you've seen of the trailers, Austin Butler, I mean, this is a massive role for mm -hmm. him. What, what do you think? I think, I think he smashed it. He, he, he portrays Elvis when he's, when he's young. Yeah. Middle-aged, even older, and, and, and the outfits and the attention to details just Good, perfect. so that's a, that's a tick. What about you? What do you think? It's going to be so good, this film. We've waited a long time for it. it took three years to make. Yeah. In the middle, they had COVID in Australia and, obviously, Tom Hanks and his wife had to go back to the oh, States. Yeah, of course. So it's, it's, it's been a, a, an ordeal, but it's yeah. here, it's now, and people really should get up and go and see it. What do, what do we think about Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks, uh, I... I've not seen much about Tom Hanks. I mean, he he was made up to look like Colonel Parker. Yeah. And they almost got it right. But, you know, you're an actor. It's yeah. rather like you will never find anybody who looks like Winston Churchill, mm. but he's been played by mm. lots of people. So, consequently, you never find anybody no who looks like Elvis Presley. Well, but Austin Butler pulls it off. Yeah. So it's going to be a great film. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. We know, Austin looks incredible and... Uh, and 
Tom doesn't make many mistakes when it comes to movie he roles, doesn't. does he? No. So and the fact that Austin did so much research into Elvis, I think he watched yeah. every clip that was out there, yeah. every audition. Should have popped your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of your time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy so the much. movie tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy, Thank enjoy you. the movie, yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward Thanks to it. Thanks for having me.